think we'll make it up slightly. I welcome you all, and I will hand over to uh, Dr. Indramani to welcome all of them for 2.0. I welcome uh, all the friends, uh, particularly Dr. Barua, the today's speaker. Barua, the great welcome. Uh, Thank you, sir. In, in this uh, Asmeed Gamcha. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, sir. Wonderful. Okay. And uh, I welcome Professor Singh and all the friends. Uh, friends, uh, you know that uh, we completed our uh, webinar one. That, that also started on 20th and, uh, of April. And on 20th of May, we are again here together. And uh, we have seen that uh, webinar one was uh, accepted very well from different age group professionals, including students, to very senior people, peer group, and uh, we got, in fact, energy from their comments and their observations that uh, we should start uh, webinar series two also. The idea behind the webinar series two, when we discussed initially, uh, to bring, uh, you know, uh, different category people, means in, in industry, management people, uh, bringing them to education institution, to research institution, you know, and uh, taking people from there and working out that how the problems How, can, how we can, uh, you know, take up the problems. And uh, then idea was that uh, this will be, this series will be finding out solution to existing problems, raising the level of uh, people, their skill, their knowledge, and ultimately jointly, you know, trying to lead to solution. And uh, I want to emphasize that one of the objective of this exercise will be to produce entrepreneurship. Because the present uh, uh, situation, you know very well that uh, uh, during this uh, COVID situation and uh, post COVID situation, we will need uh, not job seekers, we will need uh, job providers to, to see the current situation. And uh, the present uh, uh, startup ambience and entrepreneurship development ambience is very good in the country. It was started, uh, you know, uh, much uh, in advance. And if you remember that uh, even Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare have started a very good program under the rise and all different institutions are uh, uh, working together and uh, uh, to develop uh, entrepreneurship through startup uh, mechanism. So, at, and we are engaged in those uh, activities that are Sayyad, and we are finding that many of these startups who are trying to take up the project in agriculture side are lacking skill, commitment, and all kind of, uh, you know, uh, the requirements which, which entrepreneurs should have. So probably this exercise, we will try to connect them also and uh, see that uh, how how their skill also can be improved. And finally, we should lead to a solution mark which we have been talking. Friends, uh, this is, uh, again, let me tell you, era of uh, uh, engineers and particularly bioengineers, because uh, uh, all the problems uh, that, uh, which uh, civilization is facing today, there are four major types of problems. I have mentioned these earlier also, and those are related to food, related to energy, related to water, related to climate change, and now this kind of virus and other situation have been added. I I uh, am very much confident that bioengineers and agriculture engineers can be made capable capable to find out solutions, solutions of all kinds. I will be very interest, uh, interesting story just I will tell that uh, one project was given uh, you know, uh, under IIT Kanpur and under that is how and spoke word and three spokes if you, you if I want to tell you one 
is agriculture that IARI, other is HBTI, and third one is uh, BGI Lucknow. So see that uh, medical people, crop people, and then uh, 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 this uh, uh, textile people all coming together under one umbrella of engineers and finding out the solution. We have been discussing during the preparation that uh, we will be taking up like this is the this is a slogan nowadays help for all so help for all means help of soil health of plant health of animal and coming to health of man so how engineering is going to you know bring uh, you know make intervention and bring solutions that also we will see and we have to raise our label that in all these in all these activities in all these pursuit we can participate I'm having a lot of hope from this series of webinar, and uh, frankly uh, telling that we had basically some uh, problem uh, from last two, three days to start it, and I'm really, uh, you know, sorry that I say here that certain things have been, you know, to, to, to convert into, a, you know, to start it, there has been problem, but we will overcome. Let me tell you that another very good thing has come up. So people working in academia and people working in industry, they are in different ambience. And now with this webinar, we are trying to learn from one another how we can go for, you know, a, a, because and what all you are facing, this is that inertia, is that kind of things. We work under one ecosystem and, and the uh, industry people and work under another ecosystem. How, 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 how we can learn from one ecosystem to other system. This webinar preparation, I'm telling you, not stop, uh, leave, leave webinar series. I'm take, just telling you that the preparation level, we are learning a lot. So overall, this is going to develop, develop, you know, uh, skill of the uh, agri engineering professionals in different, in different arenas, different areas. And I'm very, very uh, hopeful and very, very, uh, means what we I can say is sanguine to success of this uh, webinar series. And we have uh, our very personal friend today, Dr. Barua, who will be, uh, you know, who is the opening batsman of uh, webinar series two. And uh, once again, I really thank from core of my heart, my friend, uh, Dr. Sayyad, uh, much had to be, uh, you, know, uh, you know, discussed uh, and uh, the kind of problem and uh, issues uh, he has faced, I take all the responsibilities as president of ISAE, and we will ensure that uh, in uh, in future uh, this kind of uh, uh, problems uh, does not arise, and we run a very smooth uh, webinar series. But friends, you know that if you don't face problem, you don't become mature. So let us let us consider this. Whatever problems my my younger friends have faced in uh, preparing and making preparation of this uh, webinar, this will make you uh, stronger and stronger, and you will learn all these activities. With this, uh, I, I I request that Asaya to start uh, the rest of the program. Dr. Asaya, please. So. So yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm there. I'm there. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Indramani. Uh, actually, it was a, a small excuse, but I think it will be sorted out. Uh, so that is not a big problem. The I will tell you how the webinar 1.0 started. Uh, is from what I have seen is most of the universities uh, or uh, research institutions they don't know much about technology for working in agriculture. That's how it started. So it went on well. So we combined it actually a little bit of training we are given on basic electronics, basic embedded systems, how it looks like and what are the communication, what are the sensors. Uh, this was people who are first uh, basic electronics and uh, people were not very happy because that's very uh, deep subject. Uh, but then when it comes to sensors, a lot of people appreciate it. And uh, what are the networking possibilities and how it is. So. People were asking me afterwards about how really we will learn all these things. So the, the problem started there is to conduct training in basic electronics and going making everybody electronic engineers in one way. Uh, another way is, uh, is to see that 
work, how it can be done when you distribute the work together. So the webinar two has a, a series of function now. Very simple is to keep the same motto of automation in agriculture. That is not changed. So we don't want make to make this forum as to just talk any topic, any excellent topics in agriculture. There are so many topics in agriculture. Uh, uh, something like making a pond well also for uh, irrigation in, 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 in for example, in, in climate and agriculture, excellent, excellent topics we have. But we will limit to uh, some involvement in technology in all its applications, because that is the USP of this particular uh, uh, webinar we are conducting. So we have a, a team called TAG team, that is technology application group. We are in the process of formation. We have uh, a few members, a couple of them, maybe 12 members we have now. We want to make it a large group. And this group will be responsible for uh, finding solutions, techn technological solutions for them. So first we'll train this group and they will in turn train the rest of the people. This is the idea. So we take a topic, for example, we give a speaker or whatever it is, a research work which is being done right now, or a, a work which is already in the project level, or probably we take uh, a work, an idea only. Somebody comes with the idea, this idea is excellent, we want a technology in this to be involved. No problem, we give time for them to explain that idea is also okay. But if you've done a project, you really, your need of technology, we are first one, we take priority for you. So we'll listen to you and we'll try to find out a solution of technology program faster for you. There are many components of technology, we try to help you out. So today is an exercise, we will see that also. So I would request all of you uh, to cooperate because technology is something area has been neglected in agriculture engineering till now. For example, everybody, thousands of people talk about drone, 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 but actually no agriculture engineering work in drone has been done according to me. We'll come back to the next topic, I'll explain why. It's a fruitful thing, like the money we invest and how much returns the farmers are giving. Whereas we need some areas, we can use it. But the concentration has gone a different. We'll, we'll come to the technology, how to use it. In many areas we are using, uh, so I think the tag group is one of the important things what we think, that we listen to the people, research work what is done, we coordinate, find the problems, find a solution. Plus, we have another wing, which will train these people also. And plus, one more thing I found, is not only technology, we require other skills which are not with agriculture engineers to learn the technology, how to come up. For example, presentation skills, some people don't have. Uh, we talked about some communication skills, maybe some small, small topics, interest in management. Nobody knows about management skills that much because I know that because now the agriculture is going to be open now. Uh, what announcement has come, the sector is going to be really a revolution in agriculture has come, when especially when the whole market will change, money system will change. Uh, when, when you have the, when of course, I hope it will be done in the parliament, but the idea is very good. And one more thing, we have also spatial data available now for the uh, private party. This will really open up a lot of work in technology for agriculture. Like, like every piece of land can be uh, really found out whether a particular project uh, which government is doing for a development project of digging a well or something can be easily identified completely throughout the country. So I think with this, now we, I give the second part of this uh, webinar two, the objective. One I told already, second one for training and everything, I want to request Robesh, uh, uh, my team to explain that please. So, good evening and uh, good morning to all. So, thanks, Dr. Indramani, Dr. Sure, Sayed. Sir. So, one of the things which Dr. Indramani said, you know, the it's the academia uh, and the the industry here. There are different ecosystems, and this this is the system which is bringing them together. So, I am coming from the industry uh, with about a total of 37 years of experience, postgraduates in in mechanical engineering from Indian Institute of Science, with 20 years in agricultural equipment you know, design and development. And, and that has been my forte. And I'm continuing to be working on the same. Uh, so, so that's how I bring the industry from my side. Uh, so as already said, you know, we have worked in 1.0 and we are going to 2.0. But this time the learning is not theoretical. You know, it's more of, a, of getting engaged 
and uh, it's, it's the technical expert. So there's a lot of expertise available. There's a lot of work also going on. But ultimately, when we see the, uh, you know, the technology is not coming, when automation technology is not coming in the actual world, and that problem has been recorded. Recognized, and that's how this technical application group is, uh, you know. And Dr. Sayed already explained a lot, a lot of things about it. So training will remain as a part of it. So it's both a technical part of it. So during the whole process of uh, going through the webinar. So ideally that webinar, I would say like Dr. Andramani was saying, it would have been a workshop, you know, trying to say that some expert is defining the work which is there and, and where he is getting, you know, uh, sort of an obstacle over there, what type of technology intervention he needs, he does not. That is the time in front of technology accelerator group. They have the field of experts, they, they understand the problem, they define the solutions and make it to the commercialization level. However, this probably the pandemic or the nature has taught us different methods and maybe that is a most efficient method and we are doing this webinar 2.0. So in that, not only we'll be understanding the things from Dr. Barua, he's there, and, and also we are trying to understand what are the different technology interventions are required. So it is learning by doing the actual working with it. So the, the help would come not only from, you know, the, uh, the TAG, their expertise to bring the solution, but also I think if they don't have, we can always pull in the resources from or the expertise available globally, you know, through the contact. And that brings a training to individuals as a TAG, but also to the other people. So during that process, we are also trying to identify the, uh, you know, what are the different expertise we have in a TAG. Of course, TAG is going to evolve as we said that. And, and that is what we will utilize to understand the gaps and then try to see that that is important. So one more point, uh, Dr. Sayed said that, it's, it's the, uh, not only the technical part of the training, you know, associated with the technology, it's also to be, there's a softer skill requirements. The young engineers who are doing a very good work, probably they are, they're not able to express their work in a certain manner, which is drawing the attention of the senior fraternities or, or, the, or the, you know, financial institutions. So I think those softer skills need also to, to be identified. Yeah, right. And we believe that through the, our own expertise in industry, and of course the research people, uh, you know, senior people in research, we will be able to, these, these skills to me are like something like presentation skills, uh, you know, uh, your communication skills or, or the uh, project management or financial. So those are some of the things which we'll be looking at uh, besides the technical training. What we also see is that, as Dr. Indramani said, I think nothing is today written in stone. The structure will be evolving. So as we do our first webinar, we probably will learn about it. And as we learn, we will probably stabilizing. I am sure ISAE uh, will mentor this whole tech group and structure evolving and execution of the projects in the right manner. So that's that's the one that I would like to express. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rabesh, as a guy with industry experience, come to the point. I think uh, Dr. Indramani told, uh, we, we industry, we make our own money. <laughs> Whereas the research you're paid for the work you're doing. So there's yeah, a big yeah. difference, very, very, very big difference. Uh, and uh, we don't like uh, uh, no an answer. We don't take a no, we don't like excuses. And probably uh, that's one thing I think we have to learn uh, uh, because outside of India, uh, the same like industry here also, outside of India, even the research is like that. They don't take a no for an answer. It can be done. Let us work for it. Now let's come back. Today is excellent first one uh, topic. Uh, what, how we will do is we are going to have a presenter. Uh, he will explain a, uh, a, a topic which is probably, not, you, you, we all thought that is nothing to do with uh, technology so much, but then the requirement of technology he will talk also. Then we will try to analyze very short time today because it's first day today, we lost some time. But next meeting may we will come with a solution for that also. But first we'll discuss about solution also for that problem. So uh, I think uh, I'm very pleased to invite you uh, Dr. Barua, uh, and uh, it's a very interesting, he is uh, sitting somewhere in Assam, uh, and I'm sitting in Mumbai, and I think like Indramani is sitting in Delhi, uh, I think uh, we are proud the India people are, uh, we are sitting there, it's very happy. I'm very happy to uh, welcome Dr. Barua, uh, it's yours. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, thank you. And well, good evening, Tezpur in the Tezpur University. Uh, here, I am first very briefly thank Indian Society of Agriculture Engineers and our organization. Uh, I do not know, I have heard what Ravesh and uh, said and their expectation, but I'm not sure whether these presentations, my present, first presentations, as my friend in Romania said, and first opening batsman. That Voice, voice. You are having voice problem. I will Audio. zero. But that... Audio is not working. Ah, audio is not okay. Close. Hello, hello. Yeah, now I audio can hear you. Audio is going. You speak. You speak. Okay. Uh, maybe no. can we request all the uh, all the panelists also to unmute their video? They'll get a better bandwidth, and then we can hear the speaker. If uh, those who are not speaking can just uh, unmute, I mean mute their uh, video also, please. Yeah, I think that would be better. Hello. Yes. Go ahead. We can hear you now. Am we I audible? Hear... Yes, please. So this is, uh, I am a speaker uh, teaching last uh, around 25 years. And then my, I'm a formationary man from IIT, uh, uh, College of Technology and Agriculture Engineering, Udaipur, then trained at Kharagpur and uh, Ludhiana. They get, got some flavor from for energy, and now I have interest in energy, mostly renewable energy. And uh, I am doing some work or experiencing or learning the biogas system and biogas technology. Today's topic that will be mostly uh, will be covered some of the issues uh, on the biogas technology. The title is given, just when the catchy title is needed, that's why it is given, Modernizing Biogas Technology, Scope for Promoting Farm-Based Circular Economy. But for the students uh, particularly, I'm a bit, I am a, a bit tempted to tell about, about circular economy. The circular economy mostly we say uh, where there is a provision of a recycle or your uh, recover and then reduce those concepts are there this is now being taken rather than a linear economy for example the crop residue just giving give an example crop residue is an economical uh, material or it could say economic resource and if it is produced by involvement of the farmer economy because there are many inputs are required and then ultimately you are getting grain as well as your your, your uh, straw and other byproducts. If it is used by somehow, it is reused in the farming system, or there is an option that you can burn it or you can leave it there. There are two options. If it is burned or leave, then it is going to the environment and it is linear. If it is bring, bringing back, bringing it back to the system for utilizations or making it an economical commodity, then it's circular economy. That is a concept. I think how biogas could be used and this is a better technology or better option for the circular economy that I will be highlighted here. Mm -hmm. Next, please. Next, please. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So now mostly this will be covered here uh, that I will tell about some historical overview that is required uh, to make this context of biogas as an important, uh, it's important to be given by the historical overview. And then we'll see some scenario, world scenario, as well as global scenario, as well as Indian scenario, Indian context. And then what could be the probable benefits, how India is deriving from the biogas technology in terms of this government of India's different schemes, including the farmer income doubling, then sustainability issue, then circularity. And then lastly, maybe uh, after giving this brief introductions, we'll go to directly the problem that we want to assert this technology as, as, as where, what technology is required, the gap, if any, that will be covered here. Next, please. If you see that historically, if you see that your know, different technology that we are getting, uh, it says that this is, if, you, uh, if I see the literature, this biogas 
the concept is not a new. It is recorded that even 10th century BC or even 16th century BC, it was uh, used mostly in the Middle East for the purpose of even saying that heating water also. And then uh, school record is available from 17th century where it is you, from scientifically it is known that if some of the big organic matter is allowed to decay, it will produce some gas. And then later on in uh, around 1800, it is yes, spoke. And then, uh, this, uh, I'm just telling you that this is the method known, but however, in context of a technology that is a biogas technology that is known as a, uh, anaerobic digestion technology, AD, is 1859 was the, as far as the record is concerned, was first install, installed in Bombay. And then later it was also used for your using, uh, fueling the street line systems in UK, England, uh, in, uh, uh, that in 1895, that it was moved taken from this Bombay to that your, uh, your uh, England. And then later, it's science was known. Science was known means it's a microbiological involvement. When this micro, microbiology was developed later 1930 or so, it's science, which are the useful microbiology, but microbes which works for better decomposition of the materials, those things were known and it becomes a scientific subject. One very interesting fact we should note that photovoltaic, which is now mostly a very established industry everywhere, and also one of the options of renewable energy, it's starting historical, just I was looking for, just for my curiosity, it's 1839, but it is, it's industrial share is much more than this biogas technology. Biogas is more before than that. That we should understand that that some driver some is required, some a boost up is required, something is required to make it popularized. The biogas, for example, as a renewable energy option, has the more relevant, particularly the Indian context. I'm not saying photovoltaic is also required, but Indian context, farming context. But the way it would have been penetration, extension, I think something is missing. That will come it later on. In India. The first, whatever I had from my liter, own literature search, we found that Grihalux MP biogas plant, it was recorded in uh, 19, Agriculture College Pune was first, I, we found, 1951, and then Khadi and Village Industries Commission Planning Research Action Group there, Lucknow based in the year 1952. And finally, uh, we, we could see that government also in 1960 onwards, next please, government has. And then there are uh, the different uh, pro program study of the government. It is taking uh, care that it should be penetrated. It should be extended widely. However, of late, there's an again renewed interest on this biogas. There are three specific reasons we could see from national context. One is that we are now really thinking about this energy security. Another is that intentionally nationality determined uh, our commitment, international commitment that we should go green, we should reduce this fossil fuel consumption. And our commitment is that 170 75 gigawatt installation of renewable energy by 2020. And out of that 10 gigawatt should come from biosources. This is one of the reasons that biogas would be uh, a very strong candidate in the renewable energy domain. Second is that we know this burning problem Burning problem is not a burning problem, but really a burning crop residue problem. And that is uh, creating a pollution issue, mostly in Northern India, but may, any other uh, other parts also. And then crop residue, to make it a commercially viable commodity to use it for other options is not there. That's why it is burned there itself. And that is really an issue headache for all, even it becomes a political issue too. Last one, this Chacha Bharata vision, that is total sanitation. It is realized that biogas could be in technological interventions to achieve the Chacha Bharata visions by utilizing those waste, which is considered as a waste, into a resource. Biogas can bridge that gap from waste to resource. These three reasons I could see, which are making this biogas technology again in the center stage. Next, please. Now, let us see energy security first. How is it possible? It's a myth or reality. If we see first that energy security, first we are considering biogas directly could be used as a cooking fuel. And mostly we use, or generally we use LPG as a cooking fuel. And we do not produce any LPG ourselves. We all are import. And import burden is really a burden for the government. 
And if we see the permanent import, million tons of import is so in the permanent 1.7, 1.8 million tons of oil, I mean, so by your LPG we import. And this is a huge import. And this import, if you see, just I was looking through these Excel calculations, that per annum around 925, 924 million gigajoule on an average of last few years, I took the data and just calculated that, that around 924 gigajoule of LPG energy, million gigajoule of energy, LPG energy we import per annum. And then just I was doing again uh, Excel calculations, considering some of the inputs of our own research group here. And if particular agro residue produced in India, if we can take the surplus amount, I will show you the surplus amount in later slides. If surplus amount is used and then convert with this technology into this fuel gas to just substitute this LPG, is it sufficient? The figure shows, yes, it is. It means that the ambitious plan of the government of India or even ours to make this our country independent of this LPG import is possible. And then biogas could be an prospective candidate for this. That is energy security issue it really could be solved or can be addressed if we have a strong candidate technology, sound technology of AD technology or anaerobic digestion or biogas technology. Next, please. Now, let us see how it is benefited. See, yes, this is, as I told you, the crop burning problem, a residue burning problem, and then how it is a uh, creating problem. And then some statistics says that the research findings, emissions kilogram per hectare of emissions, particulate matter, PM10, then volatile organic carbon, NOx, SOx, CO, all are polluted, pollut polluting agents. And their amount is given from some of the research in the na national research only. And then kg per ton of straw burnt, KZ uh, per ton of straw burn, this figure given, and this is alarming figure. This is one. And now another your map showing the different reasons of India. And then we have assessed the crop residue, total available crop residue. We have estimated from the crop production data available in the Ministry of uh, Food uh, and Agriculture, I share data, and then converted into residue by some factors, some uh, research factors. And we found that around 600 million ton of crop residue is available. And even if we consider that one third of it could be available as a surplus, because in, we could consider surplus is available. And then around 200 million ton will be available for energy purpose. Next, please. That means it is possible. How is this growth of this biogas technology? This is a global growth, we could see, just to understand the importance. Yes, growth in terms of numbers, there are increased the, uh, millions in numbers biogas plant. I think this uh, is a graph plot uh, taken from some sources. I have not mentioned sources yet, but it is not mine, uh, my research, but from other research. The number increasing. In India also, among them, this country, this is a global data, but Indian contribution is more compared to other countries. And then uh, this is, pos this is uh, possible, this is uh, achieved through the government initiatives, number one, research and development efforts of different organizations, including universities, IITs, Indian Council of Agricultural Research, Agricultural Universities, and then obviously feedstocks are also available, abundance. These are the favorable conditions that promote the growth of the biogas technology. However, there is something missing by which yet we are not able to convert this technology, a very popular technology or very, a, a very uh, technology which could be easily taken by the people or the farmers where it is needed. There are still some gap. These missing things we will discuss today. Next, please. Next, please. Yes, just I will, I will not uh, read everything, but we should understand the initiative of the government. There has been a continuous support of the government of India, and I have listed the different schemes under the Department of Non-Conventional Energy Resources. It is now the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. Earlier it was not Ministry, but the Department. They launched as early as to 1960, and then 1980 there was a program, Integrated Rural Energy Program. It was launched in 2000, October 2, 1980. The National Biogas Development Program. It was also introduced National Project on Biogas. And then 82 community institutions. And then Night Soil Based Biogas Plant. It is also introduced. And then claimed that around 3,900 plants were installed in by 2020, 2002. 
and then 85 to 90 also there are many schemes and where biogas is considered that it could there are also support from subsidy support support for training, support from service facilities, repair, maintenance, monitoring, and evaluations. There are many support uh, by the government. Next, please. And then in 90s also, if we see, there were some senses of this uh, uh, approaches. Along with this biogas, this manure, that means the digested slurry, which remains out even after this production with biogas. Importance is seen here. And then this is being mostly that is out of this research, different research prob, uh, outputs showing that this is a very excellent fertilizer value on organic fertilizer. And then government schemes introduced that it is a manure management program, national biogas and manure management program. It was introduced in 2002. It continued even up to 12 five year plan. And then of late also, there are different schemes. It is also shown that even a ministry on renewable energy, it could be thermal as an, shown as a thermal energy program, application program, then new national biogas and organic manual program. And of late, there's a program called galvanizing organic bio agro, bio agro resources done, that is Gobar done. And this Gobar done could address many benefits, including dependency on firewood for cooking, produce, the, a byproduct called digested, which helps in reducing the use of chemical fertilizer, improve sanitation in villages, reduce drudgery in indoor air pollution. Parallel to these government initiatives, there are different R&D organizations involved over here in India. I should mention the name of some of these uh, very uh, impact making resources of IIT Delhi, Professor Bijas group, I, I, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, Professor Heisel, uh, Dr. Heisel Sanekas group. Then we have, uh, then in, uh, uh, there are many, all I, uh, agricultural universities, including PAU, Haryana, IRI, including no, NGOs, one very important NGOs, they are even have pat patented product now, Beacon RD, there are many. And then research spreading, I should blend uh, many. So I, I may not mean, name all. And then out of this research, you could see there are different, in, uh, many understandings know how is generated. And now here we could go ahead with this to take care of these present challenges of energy, sustainability, circularity, and giving more benefit, the required benefit for the farmer. Next, please. Now I'll show you uh, some of these challenges. So here, uh, if you, you see directly the benefits, it's a clean fuel, yes, because a section of the population is still, this is very recent photo that you could see some of the women folk along with the kids were carrying head load of fuel wood. This is not old photo, this is from my mobile and very recent, 2018 photo in one of the villages. And this stove cook, cooking, indoor air pollution loaded cooking is still there. A section of the population is still suffering like that. They have aspirations to cook like this, and that will have to bridge the gap. And biogas has a really a strength to bridge this gap because this biogas is dependent on their locally available resources. And it is known to them and it is produced over here and simple connections can make them, can enable them, enable them to cook clean, the, uh, taking care of all those indoor air pollution issues, all the desert issues. This is a bit uh, science uh, for these students. I understand all agricultural engineering students know it, but still just to help them, the biomass is used and there is a conversion process, it's called anaerobic digestion, and that there is a required process condition so that microbiology bacteria could work on it, eat upon it and produce this gas. And their requirement is that they need a uh, typical thermal conditions, temperature conditions, typical chemical conditions, pH, and then typical activity inside the digester and that their productions become optimum and ultimately we get the product, main product is biogas. And this biogas could have, help it. And this biogas contains a methane CH4 and then now carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is useless. Now, if you even the, have a technology, I'll discuss it later part, carbon dioxide could be scrubbed, reduced, then burning efficiency in the stove of the biogas could be increased manifold, and there is another benefit. Even if we do not remove and use it as such, both char, that is called biogas, methane and carbon dioxide can be used to, re to uh, replace or substitute this type of cooking fuel. Next, please. Apart from uh, this cooking fuel, next, please. 
along with the cooking fuel, it has a strength to address the fertility requirement or fertilizer requirement of this farming conditions. It is a advantage for the farmer as well, because these conditions that we do use this crop residue or other manures, farm residues, to end conversion process, and then this bi microbes work on it. The mi microbes work, it produces the methane and carbon dioxide, and then some of these things, things remain undigested. Fortunately, they increase the value of the product, what about its original residue, and then value, fertilizer value, nutritional value. Some of the non-available component of these nutrients become available now for the soil. That's how the value is added, number one. Number two, this is can be reused for the farmer. And this is, has been found that by using it, we can reduce the dependency on these chemical fertilizers. And then these organic fertilizers, uh, you're increasing the quota is already in requirement for India, because if you see the fertilizer applications on Indian farming and productions, we need more fertilizers. So now having these options over an uniformly for the country, we can reduce the dependency on this chemical fertilizer, which is non-renewable again, and thereby getting the double benefit by a single stone. Thank you. Next, please. Next, please. Shall I go to the next thing? I can, I, I just am attempted to share some of my our experience. Uh, here, we could see that digested data says, we, there are many research available, but this is a very rec recent research of one of my scholars, uh, Dr. Sampriti Kataki. What was we tested this digested what remains? It is a it is a solid component, it is a liquid component, and most is a neglected one. Most it, uh, people has people do not give much Im important. Mostly where there's a rural biogas plant, small scale biogas plant, gas is taken, but digested is left over here we found that this digested can give benefit to the farm having it a different fertilizer, fertilizer suitability index. We've seen different phases that, uh, from, and then we tested in crops. These are some test uh, laboratory photographs I attempted to share with you. Another important point, I got this clue from this Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. This uh, liquid component of this digested which is mostly a uh, headache because it creates a problem for uh, this transportation of this digested, handling of the digested. Mostly in uh, biogas plant, it is recirculated manipulum or bacteria, but small size plant, it is allowed to percolate to the ground. It is kept in a pit, unlined pit or ardent pit or channel to this farm without having any uh, lining. So it is a loss. If this uh, liquid portion could be used for different purposes, here yeah, we tried it in uh, mushroom production. And then mushroom production, we found it in some cases, we found it's double the mushroom yield. Then there is a, some enzymatic and synergetic and biochemical effect of this uh, your, the liquid portion of the digested, which help it. That means the increasing the production, the farmer's income, farmer's entrepreneurship, could also be increased. That means it should not be wasted. It probe here. Next, please. Next, please. We, we, we have seen, and that I um, already mentioned how this is a neglected resource. We could see the photographs here is so that uh, this digested here, you see, it is either flown or kept on a pit. And this mostly is there are different losses. One loss is that ammonia volatilization. Some of the parts of the nitrogen is volatile, it lost. Second part is that in unlined or uh, surface, it goes percolate deep and it no more available. And then at certain interval of time collected, much of the power fertilizer goes down. And we tested it. We invented and we found that through systematic study, we see important resource, however, to make it to make it available resource or useful resource and commercial community, there must be some technological interventions requirement. That means we'll have to handle it properly and we should have some provisions of technology so that this could be used as a resource. If this can be, can be used as a resource, then the economy of this biogas, owning of biogas will increase much higher, even at lower scale of farm level of biogas plant. 
I explained that for how we have tested this uh, different component is an experimental process that we did it. And this is a uh, biogas plant we used for experimental purpose. Yes. Now let the next part, this is a very important uh, findings we have found. Mostly in a conventional systems, villagers use cow dung. However, in industrial plant where they have um, in other countries, they use different feedstocks, including the crops, corn or other crops, stems. But in Indian context, mostly at small scale household plant, this cow dung is used. But there are many residues, many uh, your crop residues and other biomasses which could be favorably used um, for production of this biogas. But what are the challenges? Challenges is that this biogas, this microbes works on this one, works on this uh, biomasses if it become have uh, typical conditions. The conditions are determined in terms of their physical conditions, rheological condi conditions because flow and other parameters are involved, its chemical characteristics, its sizes, all those things are there. Now, the co-digestion with any of them, with the cow dung, we have proved that it is useful. It's biogas productivity, that is biomethane potential increased. But we will have to ensure that whatever the feedstocks fed to a typical biogas plant, it should have the quality feedstocks. Feedstock means raw material that we use, that biomass. And then a simple random mixing is not going to benefit. We need some of this technology first. Then second, the quality assessment by some tools, maybe some interventions that uh, my colleague uh, Bob said and uh, uh, has already mentioned, some interventions where you could ensure that yes, this is the appropriate consistency that is required for this biogas plant. First, a technology for proper mixing, proper cutting, and then second, to ensure before feeding, feeding it to this plant, this is important. And that heterogeneity address could be, uh, could be addressed. We have seen by different type of microscopy of these materials, we found that, yes, it has different level of the variations in their lignin content, variations of their other, uh, your cellulose and hemicellulose content, but a typical pretreatment, so a pre typical pretreatment it is possible to make a consistent feedstock, which would be suitable for biogas productions and thereby could maximize the biogas productions, maximize the biogas productions. Maximizing the biogas productions, economy will be in favor of these users. It requires some technology interventions where desired quality could be ensured. It is being taken care of this feedstock. Next, please. These uh, photographs were done for these different type of things. Now, finally, out of this, uh, whatever these things I'm thinking that there are, are many other problems that biogas, though in numbers, there, was, there are many numbers. Num in numbers, if you find uh, in statistics or in government of Indian reporting or even uh, reports of these uh, schemes, you'll find the numbers are okay. This okay. But functioning biogas plants are very few. Even in, uh, I'm, uh, um, even I'm not, uh, it is uh, not proper for me to quote for other states, or in Assam, you will find that this, you will find even biogas plant installed very recent 2010, 11, 12, 13, uh, there are biogas plants which are not being operated. But you will hear also biogas plants which are being operated for 30 years. This particular biogas uh, uh, farmers, he has 30 years old plant. But some biogas plants are not working. And there are many reasons. And then it is the, by the farmers or the users, they do not know what is the problem. Is it the problem in this biogas type tank digester? It's a problem with the feedstock. It's a problem with the inside the digester. It's a problem with the gas holder. It, is it the problem in this event, this burner? Some of the burners block. Is it the problem with the pipe? The problem identification is a problem. The agency which installed provide the training, but the training also, they are handicapped. They uh, did not know. So this is one issue that to be taken care of. Second, uh, this quality assess, quality aspect of this feedstock, quality aspect of the digester, this should also be known to them. And then feedstocks, and that there are many miscellaneous issues. Now we should try to have a solution, an app-based solution, smartphone-based solutions, where app itself will give, if he understands, if there are some sensors or some uh, gadgets, who should take care, who should understand. For example, already my group, my, I think, colleague uh, here, um, um, uh, some of the colleagues with whom I'm working, we are conceptualizing that, we are thinking that if some sensors are put inside the digester, which could give us the conditions of the temperature, 
which could give us the condition of the gas pH condition, which will give us this uh, your uh, uh, gas productions, different species of the gas, and then that, that information will indirectly give us then indications. Same way, the doctor gets the some indications of my stomach conditions, whether I need to take a tablet for gas or I did not. The same thing could be that your diagnostic is possible by some sensors. And then in automatically, maybe some control, that is an also an ambitious plan could be done that if a temperature sensor, temperature is going down because it works with temperature of 30 degree, temperature is now 25. Some arrangement of thermal energy management is also possible automatically taken care or we can have some manual control. Similarly, pH can also be controlled, mixing can also be controlled. These are the interventions required so that a smart biogas reactor could be taken, will take care of its own problem and then it's a luxury for the users rather than a headache for the users. I have just uh, given a visual, <laughs> visual here, connecting that in mobile apps itself could give the solutions to all of them. And then these mobile apps can be an repair maintenance or service provider business. Some of these entrepreneurs would come for doing this business. Next, please. I'm uh, really happy to introduce to my colleagues, Akshay and uh, Abhishek. I have been visiting. This is a bio CNG production plant in uh, one Punjab uh, near, near Chandigarh. And they we are working, collaborating with them now. They are now struggling and they are doing good business, but they feel also the similar thing. Earlier, whatever the presentations I've given so far was considering this household small scale biogas plant. But biogas can also go to this industrial scale they have proved. They use it for, with different feedstocks, and then there are also problems. The profitability could be enhanced if some technological interventions could be introduced over here. And they are producing gas as well as organic fertilizers, and more or less they are here. Maybe some of this direct input we could get from them. And then technological interventions in terms of the sensors, in terms of this automations, in terms of this your data transfer can improve their functioning and then increase this business better. Next, please. We could say that, just to conclude here, this residue, which remains unutilized, which is the methane, because it is unutilized means uh, after fulfilling the organic carbon requirement of the soil, whatever is left in the field, this is, even if it is not burned, it could create lots of problem of greenhouse gas emissions. Under the rainfall conditions, and when it goes anaerobic, then it will produce, and there is a lost methane. And this global warming potentials of methane is much higher than this carbon dioxide. So it is a very urgent issue to address it. And then we found that in India, around 200, I'm safely say that 200 million ton of this crop residue could be easily used out of the 686 million tons of the 28 states. We made an assessment survey all, all over this India through these uh, uh, different uh, parameters available on these crop productions. Uh, and then bio energy, have... finished. Last slide. Yeah, fine. yeah okay. okay. It's going to be, I think. Last slide. Next, please. Next, please. And this is this concept I actually uh, prefer to give that multi-crop residue is an issue. We can take care of these different characteristics of different residues. There is an challenge now, but technological interventions can convert them challenge and then that could be a resource. Multiple crop residue also address the issues of availability at different seasons. We can have the different one, we can uh, take care of this issue. We have some pretreatment technology and then again quality ensuring technology. And then finally, some of these technology intervene, I have shown, I don't know whether it is a proper or not. Some of the technology interventions, biogas plant, and finally, all will be taken care of by this, your uh, technology, what Chai and other groups members are telling now. And finally, here also some ambitious plan of us that this biogas, if we need to a bottle transportable CNG, then carbon dioxide to be separated and then some fertilizer to be separated. So we'll have three products and dry ice, carbon dioxide, the biofertilizers and bio CNG. And if this goes with us, and another thing, although I mentioned the reactor itself, 
we could, there are different reactors now coming at different level, your plastic re reactors, reinforced reactors. Yes, reactor design is also some gap is there. There is also possibility of some interventions, technological interventions, the smart reactor. Reactor as good as a washing machine. I, why I need to rely on all those problems by your uh, masons, then difficulties. There are many practical or engineering difficulties of then good reactors. So maybe material science improvement and that our desired requirement could lead to a development of a good reactor as good as a washing machine, as good as an our refrigerator. That could be possible. That's a dream over here. So with this, I thank you all. Uh, this is, I think, last slide. Please. Next, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Barua. It was very interesting. Uh, topic on biogas, which uh, I am not very, uh, I have not worked in biogas much, but I think uh, where you can apply for technology, what uh, you're saying makes some sense. Like you took us from a village to a big uh, commercial production level, it needs technology. That's what we understand from your talk. Now I will put on the floor for the, any question and answer anybody has, uh, you can raise the hand because I cannot see all of the people on the screen. Uh, you can raise the hand. Uh, if you're, oh, you can put on the, yeah. Yeah, uh, Dr. Narendra first raise the hand. I can see him. So can you ask the question, please? Yeah, uh, <coughs> Dr. Barua, uh, two uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, issues uh, um, um, uh, that I would like to uh, sort of, you know, uh, having seen uh, some five years back uh, in Maharashtra, for example, at two places, uh, they had put some eight meter cube uh, biogas digesters and one had to stop because there was no adequate water. So uh, if, if we can develop a technology where, for example, uh, half the requirement of the gas, like uh, water, for example, one kilogram of tongue requires one liter of water. If, if, if there can be some process, uh, biochemical process by which you have a dry fermentation, no, that is one question. And second, biogas digester uh, just completely failed because there was no adequate dung. So what the recommendation came were like, you know, install a food processing or a fruit processing plant next to the biogas digester. So it becomes very, very, you know, uh, suggestions or recommendations from the committees that, you know, uh, you have a biogas digester. Now you bring a fruit processing or food processing plant. So do these two comments, if you can kindly address. Thank you. Shall I respond it very quickly? Yeah, yeah, please, please. You have to. Very quickly, I'm responding. Yes. In fact, uh, these problems are visualized while preparing these presentations. One is that water requirement. What we say that separation of this uh, water and then this water could be are now presently in conventional systems, it is being not used. But if we could separate these waters, it is recirculated, this is become more effective because it contains enough. Then Additional requirement of water will be much reduced, number one. Number two, there are now technologies of dry your uh, decomposition or dry degradations and where water requirement is much lesser. In the next questions, this, yes, we should not, uh, we, it is very difficult to rely only a single feedstocks like cow dung. That's how I am saying, I'm um, advocating here in my presentations, the multi crop residue or any organic matters, for that matter, which is suitable. And then these technological interventions could help me to convert any damn matters which is decomposable to convert into an suitable feedstocks for raw materials for biogas plant. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I want to call on Mohanty. Mr. Mohanty, you have a question? You raise your hand. Can you ask your question now? Mr. Mohanty? Tetu, can you enable other three people also? <coughs> Mr. Vengaya, can you ask your question, please? You have to unmute yourself, Mr. Vengaya. Mr. Mukesh Kumar, you can ask your question, you can unmute yourself. <coughs> Naresh Prasad Singh, you can unmute yourself, ask your question. Any of the four? If you can hear me, you can unmute. All of you are allowed to talk. Eji Baba. 
Thank you, sir. I, I am uh, about uh, biogas production in home level. For uh, how much uh, price uh, and first time and uh, place required for first time allotted uh, biogas production at home level, sir. Can I speak? Yeah, please. This is Lalit Maheshwari from Bombay. Bharat uh, Kisan Sang had done that Rajkot bottling plant for biogas and even Kanpur Gausala tried by bottling the biogas to supply across. So somebody should be able to share all the information across happening the country. Maybe we can make it viable. Good. Thank you. Uh, Mahendra Kumar. Naresh Prasad. Okay. Hello. Now I have I have okay. Uh, anybody Naresh Prasad, you okay. want to speak? Okay. Um say to block all of them. Rubbish mighty, you have a question, you can ask. Rubbish. So, uh, Dr. Barua, uh, you said that some of the places uh, the plants are not working. So it's purely the technology or the commercial viability. So question is not about asking that question. Question is, what is? Do you can you give some picture about the finances and commercial viability? Very briefly, you know, uh, how how the input costs are and how it is charged. Yeah. Uh, in that those uh, your failure cases I, I, I am uh, quoting I mean uh, mentioning about this rural uh, food, the plants which were installed under the schemes different schemes of the rural development different schemes of the government of India's uh, forest uh, department uh, schemes or government of India schemes and now here around two meter cube plant costing around thirty thousand and then there are provision of subsidy. There are provisions of subsidies for material subsidy and these things. I think eco-financial is one issue. Uh, if it is uh, given by that uh, by your uh, government sites, then there is no issue. They could do it, and even they need it. But here, after providing this financial support, then also it is failed. The failures are multi. From okay. our study, okay. I have at least surveyed around 60 plants. Okay. The failure reasons are different. Sometimes the civil engineering failure, some of the sometimes the biological failures, and some of the neglected attitude. Anything they put it in this uh, your biogas plant, and then understanding well that this is a biological system. So these are different type of failures. Yes, as far as the financial viability is concerned, my friends Akshay and uh, uh, Abhishek is there. They could uh, put even uh, the colleague saying about this Gujarat case. Yes, financially it is much viable. There are provisions of subsidies also under the MNRI or so. If we compare the unsubsidized LPG, unsubsidized LPG, it, and then we consider other e cases of remoteness or so, it's obviously viable. And then Aksai and uh, Abhishek, their source facility and then BioCity uh, that uh, uh, plant in uh, Panskula as proof, I've even seen their, their plant. It is much viable. Abhishek is here, I think. I request Abhishek to rip, uh, just uh, answer these questions. It will be better for hey, to I, Abhishek. No, I, 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 go, I, I think, think, we, I, think, I, think we I think we should, uh, we should because questions are, time is very short. I think uh, we'll have it for the next session. We have the energy thank you. They can ask okay, the question. Thank you, thank you. I think thank uh, you. I, would, I would next, uh, we have uh, one more. Yeah, one second. Indramani wants to speak something, please, Dr. Indramani. Dr. Barua, the, Dr. Barua, Yes, please. The aim of this seminar is to find out technological gaps because in one of the slides, in one of the slides, you mentioned. Sorry, sound is not coming. Not coming. Okay, I'll. No, it's coming. Many we are coming. able to hear you. I am able to hear you well. Like. Okay. 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 My 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 uh, submission is that. Objective of this webinar is to find out. Right. Audible, uh, it's not audible. But you said. Okay, okay, audible, I will. I... Uh, we, we can hear Dr. Indramani very well. Okay, I think we'll stop there. 
I think I understood the Indramani. I will come back to that topic from Barua when he can speak. Oh, he yeah. he mentioned about gaps and that gap should come out in this webinar. That what should be done to make this viable and what should what we should do to make it to spread. So these are two yeah. things which we want. To okay. Add. Okay. Okay. Okay, we will we'll come back to that. When you, another discussion is there, tag, that time we'll come back again no. to him. No. Barua will come back again. Now, very short, I will, uh, because I want to show the flow of the whole thing, the webinar. Today mm -hmm. we are running short, but then we'll go another 10 minutes more afterwards. Please forgive me today. But then, still we are running short. So I want to show how the flow will be there for the next webinars also. Okay, so we'll, we'll have one more, one session, uh, short session called Know the Team. Because here we have opportunity for example, today people know about Barua is working. Others we don't know. Everybody cannot be seen. So we taught it short. So two to three minutes, uh, uh, another three persons here, I want them to introduce themselves what they're doing. Time is given is two minutes to three minutes. Okay, I think uh, uh, Murthy, Dr. Murthy. Dr. Murthy? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. So, you can put your, uh, yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, my name is Ganti Murthy. I'm a professor here at IIT Indore. And uh, the research areas that I've been working on are primarily focused on resilient agroecological systems. So essentially, I work all the way from the soil health to the food processing. And we work on a lot of systems analysis part. So we look at, take a systems approach and uh, to these systems. So we look at technical feasibility, economic viability, resource sustainability, environmentally uh, impacts of different technologies and processes and we have primarily worked on biofuels and bioproducts for a long time and now we are moving into wastewater uh, treatment technologies and we have used iot technologies we have used a lot of sensors development uh, of sensors and very advanced process control so that we take the complexity of some of these processes for example the bio uh, gas digestion or the fermentation processes and then shift them into these control systems so that the actual implementation of the controllers themselves are very simple. So that's what uh, we have been trying to do. And then we have actually commercialized those products. And uh, for example, a fermentation process control, we have commercialized that. We have developed a technology for treating the landfill leachate, where we actually recover metals and uh, things like that. And uh, before coming to IIT Indore, I was a professor at uh, Oregon State University. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Um, uh, next, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Narendra Shah. Please, can you tell something about yourself? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, this is particularly for our young friends. I, I want to sort of, you know, in a given three minutes, I want to tell you a story about self. Um, uh, so as a young lad of 21 years old, I actually, with a weapon, with a B.Tech degree in agricultural engineering, I landed at AIT Bangkok uh, to do my master's. And post my MTech uh, at AIT Bangkok, I worked in energy department at AIT for about four years. And uh, but then I embarked on a PhD program in process engineering in France. And post PhD, I had a brief stint as a postdoc fellow with the uh, EEC ASEAN uh, project in, on small scale energy generation uh, in France. And after that uh, brief stint as a postdoc, I returned back to uh, join the uh, Center for Technology Alternatives of Rural Areas at IIT Bombay. And I'm still there. I'm stuck uh, at IIT Bombay. I teach there and research in the areas of agro-industry, decentralized small-scale energy technology, and uh, food processing and nutrition. Uh, and uh, if time allows, I'm, I will try to prepare uh, some talk as indicated by Dr. Syed on how sort of, you know, small scale um, energy, for example, um, how we can use it uh, beneficially in value addition in, in food and nutrition. And currently, actually, I am posted in AIT Bangkok as a visiting professor here. Uh, thank you. I hope I finished my story in three minutes. Yeah. Uh, I would like to now invite. Uh... Uh, Dr. Hazarika, M.K. Hazarika. Dr. Hazarika, ah, please. Good evening to all. So I am uh, Manoj Kumar Hazarika, Professor and former head from the Department of Food Engineering and Technology, Phase 2 University, presently heading the Center of Innovation, Incubation, and Entrepreneurship. 
and also jointly coordinating the technology enabling center of the university. Of course, uh, I started my career uh, in Department of Agricultural Engineering to begin with uh, Neris Chanagar, followed by a uh, Department of uh, Agricultural Engineering at uh, Assam University Center. Of course, uh, actually as an engineer, actually I find myself to be more of a, what we can call as an integrator. Actually, some of my activities are jointly conducted with uh, people from computer science or electronics or mechanical engineering or molecular biology. So, uh, <clears throat> at my personal level, actually, I am working on food harvest uh, handling of uh, rice or uh, food grains, uh, and it uh, uh, can be all of this region. And of course, to join uh, this uh, PAZ, actually, I was uh, quite, uh, it is a coincidence for me, actually, I have been discussing this thing, actually, at our department, uh, because my affiliation is for food engineering department and wherever where the nutrition concept is quite uh, talked about but actually what is coming up late is actually sustainable nutrition means actually where we should talk about uh, means the nexus of uh, food energy water and overall sustainability so actually that way when I actually I got about, uh, got to know about this uh, uh, initiative so I am to be very interested for this one and of course overall goal actually what I think that actually we should work for a larger goal like the food solution for the global population that may be coming in by 2050 or so we can have a target but actually at the same time actually I was just uh, seeing uh, for agricultural engineering or in general for any classical engineering that engineering knowledge system that actually would be that is what is called a system approach that is being employed by this data science where actually they see as a cause and effect in the form of more of a black box so that may make actually for the students or for upcoming students that actually that engineering knowledge may be may not be that preferred uh, may not be of that preference typically for this because it will, it will be requiring lots of mathematical consideration design consideration all however actually if you consider this innovative prospect actually the understanding the engineering units as smaller units will be adding to the innovation uh, for future technologies. So actually presently I am working on that aspect that is actually the integrating data science perspective something. Actually I'm learning data science but at the same time actually I'm trying to do whatever is the classical or physics based engineering based models and then integrating them. So that is a concept that has been uh, done and what is called the gray box model. And of course, in general, actually, I'm, uh, I find myself associated to basically competency-based design of content and delivery of engineering and vocational education. And of course, I look forward for this uh, series for effective deliberation. And that's where actually we can fulfill the concern of the masses. And of course, uh, here actually what I, another aspect, in respect to actually agriculture engineering, I should say that actually we have uh, it as an advantage or as a challenge as well that actually one of our stakeholders is always a farmer actually who, who do not like to take this farming practice as an enterprise so therefore actually much of our innovation is motivated by sometimes this government policies so therefore actually we are not sure whether actually our innovation finally actually yields the uh, benefit or means uh, overall goal meet the overall goal and for our locational advantage, we have found that actually this uh, one of the enterprises actually, which work on in this line is basically tea industries. So probably that uh, that can be a good uh, case study where actually we can say that actually agricultural engineering can give them a whole uh, wholesome solution to them, and probably that can be a beginning point. Of course, uh, in that actually, there has been some limitation that actually how they are opening up to us and all. But actually now we are at, at this university, we are starting that whether we can just uh, uh, go along with them and find some solutions and that will be model for overall agricultural engineering based enterprise. So right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Azarika. I think next time, this is the first time we are trying this. Next time I think I would like the, uh, know the team people will tell about skill sets, what they have uh, probably. Today we are running uh, short of time. Uh, what skills they have so others will know. For example, I know uh, uh, um, one of the persons knows C very well in the team of three out of the three. Uh, C is excellent, he, he knows. 
So I think uh, when you make the tag team, I think he can probably guide and mentor the people in that particular technical skills. Uh, because some people have technical skills uh, in a different areas. So I think next time we'll do that. But right now I'll show you another part for a few minutes only short. What is ex exactly the idea of this? Actually today we are taking, I'm going to take only three minutes on this, but it's going to be half an hour from the next one, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. I'm going to show after this presenter what the tag is going to discuss about it. Can you please put a slide, please? Uh, today will be delayed by another five minutes. I think let us bear with it today for a special case. Now, for example, this is the uh, uh, this is the slide we have seen, which uh, Dr. Barua has shown. So now it looks simple. I think uh, one thing we got reply by a guest, it is financially viable that we come to know from him. This I asked also very first before it came, is it financially viable or not? Then I asked him, what is the reason you're looking for technology here? And we had a, a, a webinar, I had a webinar with him, with team also, Dr. Barua's team completely, he's got a, he's a uh, department of electronics people, everything, every team. Now the question is, he says, the problem is actually, uh, there could be a problem of uh, pH value, it may be acidic. So the people say, farmer says it's not working, that's all. So how to find out? So I, then we discuss about, I think this is a challenge actually, if you want to use it, we, because we don't use much sensors. The very first you see here, we will come back with the solutions of sensors, how to detect the gases. For example, you told already methane and uh, CO2, uh, these are the two available and different type of sensors available. So this, our team will help to identify the sensors and somebody has to test it. This, the whole thing is somebody has to test, only one lab can test this particular sensor is useful for this and it's enough for throughout India, we can use all this information. That is the idea of this tag team, what I'm thinking. For example, you have hydrogen also, alcohol, uh, CO and methane uh, sensors are very cheaply available sensors. So sensor is one thing. Then he's talking about another one sensor also, flow measurement sensor. Flow measurement sensor or mass volume measurement sensor also we have to identify. Uh, flow means how much is going to put inside and how much gas comes outside. And he needs a switch to find out whether gas is flowing through a burner or not, for example. So this, the complete uh, sensors then as you see the picture is in the form. So you have sensor in different places. So you have to know how to network locally first. Okay, he says the temperature, the, the person standing on the top of the slide, you see uh, optimum temperature and varying, varying season. So you need a temperature sensor there somewhere and that must communicate to some other place. So this whole networking, local networking is excellent topic for this. And plus you have next level, the data goes to server back again. So there again, the third level. So actually when you see the application, a lot of learning can be done in technology system. So we will discuss this in next session and all we'll discuss in detail about this. Right now I stop with this in short of time, but I think next time we will take up this, we'll come and present you for this particular case also, probably after a few weeks, uh, when you make some models and something like that, we'll come and explain you how we have solved this problem of this technology come. Now with these words, I would like to request uh, some remarks from uh, Professor Gajan Singh, if you can tell some words. Uh, slide off, please. Setu. Professor Gajan Singh. Professor Gajan Singh is there. I think he's there. Yeah. Uh, uh, we would like to have your comments and advice. Well, uh, I must congratulate uh, Devin Barua for excellent presentation. Uh, my understanding of biogas, whatever I have followed, is that on the individual farmer units, uh, for one reason or another, not technology regions, but mostly management region, feeding every day, cleaning up from time to time, taking out the way. Uh, that has been a problem. Can we develop an entrepreneur system? Enterprise, which will work more as a community, survey community, rather than an individual unit. And 
provide like as a service provider giving a pipe connection to some 20 houses or 30 houses or 40 houses okay then this entrepreneur uh, is can collect the raw material it's not a problem to get raw material is not a problem in village from cow dung and all that question is how to manage it so i think if we can develop a simple uh, project of coming out with different sizes of biogas plants to survey a small group 20 families 30 families 50 families whatever it is i think that could be a very good start i do not see a much future for individual units for an individual family i think it's too much uh, lack of uh, attendance for few days they go and visit a uh, go to a marriage party in a relatives four days something everything choked dried up and nobody wants to start there are so many other things winter season is different problem summer has a water problem so i think the neglect for one aspect results into complete failure of their system so my suggestion will be to work as an enterprise uh, as a custom hiring type system service provider type and uh, if somebody if uh, dr barua and other iit delhi and uh, cia bhopal there's so many places where they and i i iri indramani group himself uh, is very familiar with the villages and working with it come out with those models so my suggestion will be look at those workable models thank you thank you thank you actually now i have a request to make to all of you uh, we were for making a webinar successful we require challenges so we require challenges you are facing challenges in every area but it must be brought to us like one of the example he told because we are searching for examples uh, people who have to give us technical challenges like i told you only then uh, we can help because i know a lot of areas in water everywhere can be used we have talked about it in different forums already I want really people who are working on the particular area. For example, this is energy. Now we have problems with solar pumping. I know very well. The solar pumping is a big problem. There's no data coming inside. It can help very much technology. So anybody working in solar pumping, for example, can come inside. Last time we had an example of solar refrigeration used. Uh, Dr. Indramani, uh, the, one of the uh, team members showed that. So I want energy with that type of technology, what requirement is there, where they need our help or where the entrepreneurship can come into picture. Now, like I told you, next theme also I'll give you, next topic is, you're talking about, uh, I have given one theme topic, that is the myth and the truth. Uh, this will be one of the team where you can give me the speaker's topic. What is the real myth? What is the real truth? In different type of, uh, in agriculture, what we are using, starting from drones, starting from whatever application, how we can streamline, so how the people think now, how really can be implemented the technology. So this we have one more thing. Energy we have seen now we told. Energy, anybody wants to talk on energy? Water is water you can take. Water generally I'm calling. Uh, very important, the water problem is very important. Why I'm seeing technology is important is, I know some projects which are happening, again I'm repeating, happening even in Maharashtra, where we want to find out what are the intervention done by different projects, different stakeholders in water, water in contour farming, everything. It cannot be validated by now. So we need the system to come up the picture, people to understand. So with this request, I request all of you to give support. So we will take care of the training and finding solutions. The good team will make, and we want more people to come in the tag team. Anybody else want to have suggestions? We will have allow. We can talk for another few moments. No problem. Yes. You raise your hand. Yes. Anybody can give such. Uh, I... Tell your name, please. Yes. May I only uh, that uh, I uh, thank you. Uh, already we are taking a uh, community progress plan. There's four third households now going for two thousand and I request that if uh, come together and help us. There are some issues I have not covered in this presentation. And this is uh, through a DST seed uh, sponsored program in a remote village. And hopefully this will work and give us more information the how to go with this model of community biogas plant. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Another anybody else? Anybody else has suggestions? 
other topics or how to get the other new topics anybody new topics suggest any theme you suggest anybody sujim sir yeah please go ahead please go ahead excuse me sir am i audible yeah yeah Uh, yes, sir my question is uh, from biogas plant uh, so much of slurry is available and in drip irrigation system we are talking about fertigation and also uh, we are talking about organic farming so uh, we should develop some methodology so that this slurry can be used as fertigation and drip so this is a future research a tremendous uh, scope is there uh, with biogas with a uh, link to drip fertigation So this is my suggestion, but uh, research has not been done. But this is just scope for future. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent suggestion. I think anybody else want to comment? We have another three minutes. Anybody can comment. Anybody has suggestions? No problem. We can talk. Uh, so i i tend to be here i tend to agree yeah. with uh, dr gajendra you know that you know so of course this group is trying to find a technology solution so even if we provide the whole system will not probably be successful there for ultimately because there are other other elements so i think this problem needs to be defined called as an efficiency and today it is an efficient efficient uh, may overall model and efficient and then we say when we put technology so today it is running at 20% and when we do provide a technology intervention because there will be cost but the efficiencies will go to 80 to 90% overall system you know then probably uh, one can make a sort of entrepreneurial model which attracts people you know so and also is a is a return for all the efforts uh, and the cost that will be associated with uh, the te- you know technology okay. thank you rubesh thank you rubesh can i can i come in uh, this is narain shah here yeah please please yeah so like you know the ministry of petroleum had come out with a, a scheme called scheme ujwala for example by which uh, you know i mean uh, it had good and bad points like it did sort of give the subsidized uh, lpg cylinders even in forests for example so uh, see the the this the flame that comes out of the biogas which is as good or even as better as as the lpg flame so uh, um, if if for example uh, as a part of you know some 10% of the scheme utwala can be diverted to biogas i think it could make uh, much much more impact in terms of you know uh, increasing its utilization in the in the in the village area so somebody will have to sort of uh, make this as i mean entrepreneur or somebody will have to take up and say that it works as good as lpgs so let the 10% of the users um, uh, which are sort of target uh, beneficiaries of ujwala scheme let them use the biogas i mean and mostly the rural areas thank you uh, dr indramani so oh, i just wanted to add that uh, this uh, this is really a very important uh, area still and what professor singh said that uh, rather than at individual level uh, we should go at uh, you know a decentralized uh, but connected one uh, you know a farm where uh, we can provide uh, energy solution to as a village a complete village we can provide energy solution the second thing uh, i wanted to add that is by product this biogas slurry has lot of important which uh, 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 my uh, told and uh, we the research has been done on uh, application part apart from increasing uh, nutrient of uh, nutrient of the soil it who it increases water holding capacity and if you apply biogas slurry you can reduce one irrigation at least in major crop like wheat and others you can in, in, you can decrease one irrigation reduce one irrigation so that will be that will be other so that by product uh, has not been basically used or popularized to the extent it should be done so these are the gaps which we are we are we will list that uh, with respect to biogas uh, this uh, slurry utilization in fertigation particularly how it can be used in fertigation then 
what should be the commercial viable uh, you know uh, proportion of biogas production that uh, that uh, you know the professor singh knows that uh, we got a very big project there was some problem otherwise uh, we had a uh, you know to, to japanese uh, uh, support we had a proposal it was approved but finally it could not uh, basically materialize whole area you know we had a plan to find out energy solution so seeing the energy crisis biogas uh, stands uh, a very good uh, you know it has, it has to play a very good role but all the technological hiccups and uh, commercial uh, and uh, uh, this your business model that all needs to be developed to make biogas a very important energy source with this i thank uh, dr barua for a very uh, wonderful talk and i'm really very happy as dr sayed mentioned in the beginning that uh, northeast west uh, north and south and you know whole india is together uh, plus plus us us and bangkok <laughs> and uh, i am in new york and really i'm yeah, very far away <laughs> so this is this is what is another part of our connecting people and uh, sir uh, we actually we missed that one we we have many successful stories at uh, as one of our farmer friend shared that uh, in gujarat or in other parts where successful stories are there with at farmers level at least one one per one uh, objective of this webinar will be to collect all these information at one place mm. and find out what all is available at this country in particularly in biogas area so that 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 again we will say and i will request my uh, farmer friends and whosoever are participating please share the information little in detail so that we can compile that and put up at our isa website that what all is available in biogas area research level commercial utilization level and then gaps etc we can we can uh, you know uh, uh, collect all this information and uh, put it at our website that is what our peer group has been suggesting that bring in uh, you know all these technology at one place so that with, with one click a person can see what is available and what are the gaps with this uh, from my side i thank uh, thank you yeah. all and uh, pati professor singh and uh, today's speaker and uh, dr sayyad uh, you have been part yeah. of the whole program so no, no, no. Uh, lot many thanks and uh, all partha and uh, setu uh, rao and uh, dilip and all all are working thank you very much uh, for all your contribution thank you